Hi, I'm Jonathan, and I'm a sergeant here in His Majesty's 10th Regiment of Foot, Battalion Sergeant to be a little more specific. So today we are going to be taking a look at the differences in the kit of a regiment in 1775, in this case the 10th Regiment of Foot in Boston in 74 and 75. So first, we're going to take a look at the headwear. First up, we have the Grenadier with his bearskin miter cap. Makes him look very imposing and intimidating. And as you can see here, it gives Kyle a lot more height, even though Kyle is not as tall as he looks in this picture here. Next up here, we have the standard battalion soldier with his cocked hat. Very iconic to the period. And that is the standard hat of eight companies in a regiment. Next up, we have the leather cap hat of the light infantrymen, and as you can see, it has chains and is a very different style than the rest of the company caps. This is to provide a little more protection to the wearer's head. So lastly here, we have someone who is portraying a drummer, and as you can see from the drummer, he shares a similar cap to the grenadier, but if you'll notice in particular, his cap badge is a little bit different than the grenadier plate. Now, if we take a look at the whole line here, you'll notice a little bit of a variety in coats. If we take a look at the Grenadier coat, you'll notice that it has the iconic wings. And if we look at Tyler here, who is wearing just a regular battalion coat, it does not have any wings. And then if we look at the drummer here, and then if we look at the light infantrymen, they also have wings. And the wings denote that they are a little bit more special. So if you take a look at the light infantry coat, you'll notice that it is cut shorter than the battalion coat and the grenadier coat. This is supposedly so that you are less getting caught up on branches and shrubbery. Though in North America, you're going to get caught up on branches and shrubbery, whether you like it or you don't. Now, we have the drummer's coat here, and if you'll notice, it is just like the regular battalion and grenadier coat, but it is in reverse. And this is distinctive to drummers and fifers. you also notice it's a little fancier with lace and it also has wings, as you see here. Now, if we take a look at the small clothes of the men here, the grenadiers and the battalion men all have standard white woolen broadcloth small clothes. But if we take a look here at the light infantryman, we'll notice that his uh, waistcoat is of a little bit of a different color. It is red compared to white. And this is another distinct feature of the light infantryman. He is the most robust, agile soldier, and you can see it reflected in his uniform. Very different than the rest of the soldiers that we're looking at here today. Now, let's take a look at the belting. If you take a look at the battalion and grenadiers again, they have just white buff belting and not much to write home about. But if we take a little bit of a closer look at the grenadier, he has something that is a little different than the battalion companies, and this is a match case. And what are their names? Grenadiers. So we can kind of guess that this might have something to do with that. And this is a match case that would historically have been used to light their grenades. Though by the 1770s, greatly out of fashion. So this is really just a badge of honor. But in case you haven't noticed, the battalion soldiers and the grenadiers share much of the same common uniform features. The grenadiers are just a little bit fancier. Now, if we take a look at the light infantryman's uniform here, we see that he has black belting, and he has a belly box, and in this instance, he is wearing a cartridge pouch. And this, again, is different with his elite light infantry status, where he has the black fancy belting to denote that he is a light infantryman. And if we take a look here in his little belly box, he has some nice quick access ammunition. In other iterations of this uniform, he will have a powder horn, and he'll have a ball bag so that he can individually load uh, the shot from there. But this is nice, quick, and ready use here. So now for footwear and ankle protection, what you see here, the three of them, including myself, are wearing are something called winter leggings, and that is to protect the wearer in winter. But you'll notice that Isaac here is wearing just standard short gaiters, and those are the common gaiter of the period. By 1775, Tall gaiters have almost essentially fallen out of fashion, except for winter leggings, which are very specific to being worn in the winter time. To the left, face. Now we've turned the men this way, just so we can get a little bit of a better look at the backs of them. 
As you can see here, they all have their cartridge pouches, not to be confused with cartridge boxes. And these ones here hold 29 rounds. Now, if we go to the other side, Kyle, could you do a left face? You we'll also see that he has a haversack and a canteen. The haversack is his food bag. He carries all of his different food stuffs that he would have when he was out in the countryside or doing anything like that. And then above that, we have his canteen, which is pretty self-explanatory. This holds the man's water, and it is very important to have a man drinking water. So, Kyle, to the right face. To the front face. So, we have looked at the different uniforms of the men in a regiment in 1775. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video very soon. This could be you. Choose your path in one of America's premier reenacting units, His Majesty's 10th Regiment of Foot. Visit redcoat.org.